Well, let's talk now about going green in America. It means a lot of things to a lot of different people, but overall we're talking about making decisions that help or at least don't harm the environment. There is, even in this country, the green lobby that throws money and influence behind projects it likes and spends plenty more to try to stop projects it doesn't. But from the fiasco at the Solyndra solar plant to tough times and a threat of record high gas prices, there's a large part of this country that is caring less and less about going green. For the first time in more than 30 years also, a new nuclear power plant was given the green light by federal regulators and the Atlanta-based Southern Company will soon begin its project to build two nuclear reactors at its site south of Augusta, Georgia. I spoke earlier with Tim Cavanaugh, the managing editor for Reason.com, about all of this. Here's his take. Uh I think it's a, there's a need for the energy, um, I, and I don't understand why the nuclear energy industry still needs to be subsidized. I mean, the one thing nobody argues about a nuclear plant is that it doesn't produce a lot of energy. This is a valuable stuff. It produces a lot of energy, which uh, unfortunately it's looking more and more like a lot of the alternative uh, resources really don't produce what we need. So there is a need for this energy, and that sort of wins the argument. Whether it's uh, green or not green is probably another question, but. Uh, let's talk about, you know, here in Washington, we're always sort of talking about uh, different ways in which this government spends its money. I know energy is certainly um, one area that a lot of people sort of keep their eyes on. I know you're, you're one of those people. Um, talk a little bit about the energy budget and, and what you see laid out in there as um, good and what you see as problematic. Some things are good. Uh, you know, I'm not sure they were arrived at for the right reasons, but uh, for example, uh, subsidies to fossil fuels, uh, the, it cl the, the budget claims at least, the administration is claiming that it's eliminated $4 billion of subsidies to fossil fuels, which is terrific. I mean, why does a fossil fuel industry need subsidy? These are the people who sell us gas and heat our houses. Uh, it seems to me they have a very regular source of income. So that's great. Unfortunately, that subsidy, rather than just being eliminated because we're broke, because the government is out of money and because it is severely in debt, and if the government were your best friend, you would commit that person to bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, it, dis, even despite that, we're still spending even more money on subsidies. Having gotten rid of that $4 billion, we're going to spend more than $4 billion in 2013 on so-called energy resources. This is the Nuclear Energy Agency. Uh, the, the, uh, and. Uh, the Energy Department, and it used to be called the Nuclear Energy Agency. It evolved out of this agency that started way, way back uh, when Shakespeare was still writing his plays. And uh, it was uh, this agency uh, designed around the idea that nuclear weapons and nuclear power are a new kettle of fish, and we need a new department to handle them. It has strayed from its mission since Jimmy Carter created the Department of Energy in the 70s, and now it's you know, not even the majority of the budget now goes to what we is supposed to go to, to the safety of our nuclear stockpile and making sure that nukes don't explode or get into the wrong hands or any of that kind of stuff and to make sure that nuclear power plants are safe. It only, it, it doesn't even spend half of its budget on that. The rest of it is for this other stuff. Some of it's legitimate. Some of it is remediation of toxic zones. But other stuff is just these subsidies that are going to go to more cylindras and more beacon powers and all the rest of them that are piling up like fish on a fishing expedition. <laughs> it's not, of course, though, just the government that has a hand in here. I mean, uh, let's talk about the green lobby. You know, all these th these dollars and this amount of support uh, that, you know, goes behind causes in the name of saving the earth and all that kind of stuff. But um, that's not always what happens. So uh, talk to me a little bit about sort of the complexity relationship between the green lobby and the rest of America? Uh, it's, it's, it's complex, and the relationship of the green lobby with itself is complex. Uh, we were just touching on nuclear power. There are some people who say, oh, that's less uh, um, carbon emitting, or somehow it contributes to global warming less. But, uh, you know, so that's one branch, and they, they maybe have won out a little bit in getting that plan approved. Uh, there are others who have been fighting, for example, the Keystone XL pipeline. Again, this is needed energy for an energy-hungry country. If we don't want to continue, other countries are catching up, and that's good news. But if we want to stay ahead as a country, we're going to need energy. And this, unfortunately, is one where the State Department's involved and all these other bureaucracies are involved. 
because it's transnational and people still believe in national borders. So Canada and the United States technically are different countries. So we have to get all of these bureaucrats involved and now the whole thing is screwed up. We need the energy. We need to, I, I like having a, a house that's hot at night. Even in LA sometimes I get cold. Uh, it's interesting, though, and you mentioned the Keystone Pipeline. This is one example of um, sort of these pieces of energy legislation or these ideas um, related to the environment that in turn get sort of turned into political tools. For example, um, you know, the Keystone Energy, uh, the Keystone Pipeline was, you know, in a bill and then the president decided not to move forward with it. But really, it, it's been sort of a, a little wedge issue, uh, politically speaking. Why does this happen so often? Uh, because it's politics. It's the nature of politics. It's the organization of hatreds. So people are just saying, you know, the other side screwed up or this side screwed up. In this case, I'm, I'm happy to see the president dinged a little bit on this. I, th I think it was a ridiculous cave. And, you know, and he actually had his own coalition split. There were some of his union backers wanted the Keystone XL pipeline to go through. A lot of people wanted to go through who are not just, it's not just because they want to rape the environment or something. It's because they, they recognize that these, these energies keep people alive. They allow more of us to stay alive. And they allow more of us to travel and do all the things that, would, that make us human. Finally, Tim, uh, we are, and it's very clear here in Washington, I'm sure it is there as well, um, in an election year, all kinds of issues being dangled from contraception to, to everything. But what do you think? I mean, you're, you're, you sort of really have your eyes uh, on some of these issues. What do you think are going to be big election year issues regarding energy and the environment? Uh, I think you're going to continue to see the Energy Department's loan guarantee program uh, become, be a p big political football. I think Solyndra itself may have run out of steam. But as I said, more of these companies are declaring bankruptcy every day. That's the vicissitudes of the market. Another thing uh, that will be of interest is the, uh, the new budget contains a lot more energy for uh, a lot more money, <laughs> excuse me, uh, money, the fuel of politics. Uh, it, it contains a lot more money for a, a, an ARPA type of project just for green energy things. And uh, again, uh, this, this is uh, supposedly a little better because it doesn't give it directly to companies who are going to compete in the marketplace. But all of this is wasted money. The market will figure it out. The people will figure it out for themselves. They don't need Washington bureaucrats telling them what to do. You figure it out every time you pay your gas bill or you decide to put gas in your car or whatever you do or you decide to take a bike. That's up to you. You don't need bureaucrats in Washington telling you what to do. Tell you what, those Washington bureaucrats would probably disagree with you. Uh, Tim Cavanaugh, managing editor for Reason.com in our studios in Los Angeles.